I will confess, Karani, I am, I know just enough about digital currencies to most likely get it wrong. But I know about it, but I'm not used to these, to this class that you're talking about, which is stable coins. Okay, okay, okay. Brief me, like I have no idea. So what are stable coins technically? And how are they different from like things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that? So stable coins are, exist because they are trying to solve the problems that are usually associated with traditional cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Stable the coins, volatility like that. Yes. So stable coins, as the name suggests, it's stable because okay. it's, packed to, uh, it's backed by a real asset. So the asset could be anything. There's three types commonly. Um, it's one is backed by fiat currency, uh, hmm. and another one is commodity backed. Okay. So it could be gold, it could be oil, it could be real estate even. And the third one, it could even be backed by cryptocurrencies, different cryptocurrencies. It could be backed by Bitcoin. But these all are um, different in a sense. But the most popular ones are actually the ones that are backed by currency, fiat currency. And in fact, um, Tata Coin. Um, is the fifth largest cryptocurrency at the moment in terms of market capitalization. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the daily trading volume is actually bigger than Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Now, yes. What is what are their traits that make them appealing to people as opposed to just you know going to go yeah. into Bitcoin or Ethereum? So one thing that's very interesting. So uh, stable coins are very popular among exchanges because they use it to provide liquidity, they need that liquidity. Mm. But for people like you and me, we like the fact that it could solve the, um, it could get rid of the middleman. So say for example, I think uh, one of my um, interviewees actually mentioned that it could ease the payment process. You cut through the middleman, the settlement process, everything, and you get this um, quick payments, like seamless, then and mm. there without paying the extra money. And okay. another one is also remittance. So um, one of my interviewees said that he faced difficulties because he's based in Singapore, but his family is here in Malaysia. So whenever he sends money, the problem with banks and other traditional MSBs is that they don't operate on weekends and they also charge a really heavy fee. Yes, so yes, yes. stablecoin can solve that problem. Um, traditional cryptocurrencies can also solve this problem. But stable coins are not volatile, so mm. they are a better alternative, so to speak. Because Bitcoin, you know, uh, on certain days it can and have fluctuated up to twenty percent a day. Yeah, and yes. it comes down just as fast. That's yes, how people yes. who I mean, it's one of those things where you really need to be an active investor. You cannot just leave it. Mm. You know, go have your tetra and come back. It could yes. change so much in that time. Yes. So but also unlike traditional cryptocurrencies, people don't hold on to stable coins for returns. They don't expect any premiums at all because it really depends on the underlying asset. All right. And it, I don't think that in all my interviews, they don't think that it would be ever trading at a higher premium, so to speak, uh, compared to its underlying asset. Okay, mm. so, but then that makes it easier just to do Transactions. Then. Yes. Is yes. that what you buy it for? Mostly yes, just to exactly. do the transactions. Yes. We do actually have a stablecoin that is developed here, um, here in Malaysia. So they are regulated by the Labuan FSA. Mm. Uh, the company is called HWGG Capital. I did speak to them. Um, they launched HWG Coin um, or HWG Cash, um, and they are actually. But the thing is, you cannot find the coin on any exchanges. What you have to do is you have to deposit the money on their platform and then they will convert it for you they will convert your fiat currency for you mm -hmm. and then you can use it as a means of payment via their digital wallet so of all the people you talk to mm. why do they think something like stable current coins would actually pick up in malaysia because you spoke to quite a few guys yes um there's definitely use a use case uh for cryptocurrencies in malaysia that being said we still have a lot of um, regulatory concerns and uncertainties. Um, that's why um, I spoke to Robin Lee from Hello Gold. Mm. He actually has developed a gold back coin uh, some time back, but it was never marketed because of the regulatory uncertainty. So it, instead of putting it on exchanges, making it available, he actually gives it as a reward to 
um, the the Hello Gold users, and then they can sell it back to Hello Gold for a uh, spot price. Um, okay. So this is the this would be the challenge in Malaysia lah regarding regulations, but um, for the local exchanges that have received conditional or full approval by the SC, this is not their main priority. They like the technology, they are excited by it, but they don't think that they are going to be making stable coins available on their exchanges yet because their main priority right now is to be, first of all, fully regulated and mm-hmm. second of all, to educate the local investors. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of The Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.